Welcome to another How to Play video with AYCB. I'm Carlo. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to play Welcome To, which is a roll and write game with cards, sometimes referred to as a flip and write, because rather than rolling dice and writing into our sheets, we're going to be flipping numbered cards and choosing from those options. This is a game designed by Benoit Turpin, and although it might sound silly, the official player count on this box is 1 to 100 players. Regardless of player count, this can be played in less than half an hour. Uh, in Welcome To, you are an American architect in the 1950s, tasked with creating or designing a suburb consisting of three streets. You can fill these streets with parks, swimming pools, and a variety of other things. As the game goes on and players' sheets fill up, the game can end in one of three ways, and at the end of the game, the player with the most points wins. Let me show you how to play. All right, so to set up, give each player one of these score pad sheets and ask them to write the name of their neighborhood or suburb in this box here. The sheets themselves are quite simple. You have your top half where you're actually writing in the numbers on your three streets. The bottom half has a blue section where you'll track your positive points throughout the game and this red section where you'll have your negative points. Then ensure that each player has a reference sheet or one of these little player aids along with a pen or pencil. Shuffle and deal three random city plans, one from each of these decks, number one, number two, and number three. These will be the three city plans available for the game that players can compete to achieve. Then shuffle the deck of 81 construction cards and divide them into three equal piles of 27 cards each, number side face up. Then flip one card from each pile over, and now you're ready to play. In Welcome To, players play simultaneously. This means that once the cards are flipped from the construction deck, Everyone is taking their turn at the same time and filling something in on their sheet, and when they're done, we move to the next turn. Here's how a turn actually works. Each turn, players will pick one of the three available numbers here, which represent the address of the house, and then they will fill it into a house on their sheet. Each house number will come with a corresponding possible bonus action. This is not a mandatory action, but players can only take the action that is next to the number they take. Players can all choose the same number if they want. Once everyone has written in their house number and taken their bonus action, if they choose to do so, then we'll flip three more cards, one from each pile, and we'll go again. We'll continue in this way round after round until one of the three endgame conditions are met, which I'll explain a bit later. So before explaining what the bonus actions do, let's cover some of the placement rules for placing the actual house numbers themselves. The first thing to note is that numbers must always be placed in ascending order, lowest to highest, from left to right. You can start anywhere you want on any of your streets and fill in any number on any row regardless of which card you took from the pile as long as the numbers from left to right are always higher. Generally you can never have the same number more than once per row or street although there is a way around that which I'll explain later. You can even leave gaps between numbers or skip numbers so you can put a 7 right next to a 4. But the deck only has numbers from 1 through 15, although there are ways to lower your number to a 0 or increase it to a 16 or at most a 17. Each turn when these three cards are flipped, players must take a number. If you can fill something in, you cannot pass. If you are unable to build, then you must take a building permit refusal, which is marked on your sheet by crossing off the highest available number here in this red section. In this case, the first building permit refusal, you would cross off the 0 at the top. And that's it. As long as you follow those placement rules, you can put your numbers in on whichever houses on whichever street you'd like. Now let's take a look at those bonus effects I was talking about. First, we'll look at the surveyor, which allows you to build fences. Regardless of which house you place your number into, the fence can go on any street. To denote the fence, you'll simply color in one of these dotted lines between two of the houses. Note, the far end of each street on the left and right already has a fence. That is why these are solid white lines. Fences are used to create estates, which can be anywhere from one to six houses long. An estate can only be considered a completed estate once all of the properties within it have numbers assigned to the houses. Next is the real estate agent. If you choose this effect, you simply cross off the top number of any column in this purple real estate section. At the end of the game, you'll be counting up how many completed estates of that size you have and multiplying that number by the smallest unchecked value in that corresponding column. Next up is the Landscaper, which allows you to build a park. To do this, you simply cross off one of these trees on the same street of the number chosen. By default, each street starts with a park value of 0, as you can see here, but as soon as you build your first park, you'll cross off that 0, 
and now since the 2 is the lowest number showing, that would be your current score for parks. Next up is the pool manufacturer effect. You'll notice some spots on your streets have pools. Think of these as plans or blueprints, which are not yet actual pools, but rather the properties that can have pools. If you write the number that has the pool bonus card next to it in one of these spaces, you build the pool. Simply circle the pool on the sheet to indicate that, and then, like real estate and parks, you cross off the lowest number here in this pool section, starting with the zero. Also, if you pick a construction card with a number and a pool next to it, you don't have to place it in a spot with a pool. As with all effects, the pool is optional. Next up, this orange one is called the temp agency. You can, if you want, increase or decrease the corresponding number on the card by either one or two. So this is how a one can become a zero or how you can make your 15 go up to a 16 or 17. Cross off either one or two of these orange boxes here based on how much you altered the number by. At the end of the game, the player with the most created jobs will get seven points, the second player will get four, and the third will get one. If there are any ties, players share the points. The final effect is biz. Remember earlier I said you cannot have two of the same number on the same street. This is how you can bypass that. Whereas all the other bonus effects in the game actually gain you points, think of this biz card as something you use when you're in a pinch, kind of as a last resort, because you're actually going to lose points from using this action. Let's say I had a 6 here and a 7 here with an open space in between, and I wanted to squeeze something else in. Normally, since the numbers have to be in ascending order and duplicates aren't allowed, I wouldn't be able to. However, with this biz card, I can take a 6 or a 7 and write it in here, like so, with the letters B, I, S next to it. Think of this almost as a duplex with a 6A and a 6B. If you use this biz effect, cross off the smallest value in this red box down here. Keep in mind the red area here represents negative points. Speaking of the red area with the negative points, now would be a good time to show you what the other two spots mean. This spot here with the asterisk represents roundabouts, which are part of the expert variant, which you can ignore for now. Below we have the building permit refusal section. Anytime a player is stuck and cannot simply fill in any of the three available construction card numbers, they must take a building permit refusal. Building permit refusals are one of the three ways that the game can end, which I mentioned earlier. Anytime a player has had their third building permit refusal, the game will end. Another way the game can end is if any player fills in every house on their three streets. The third and final way the game can end is if any player achieves all three of the game's city plans, which we'll take a closer look at now. Earlier I mentioned that part of setup will include turning over one of these city plans from each of the decks numbered 1, 2, and 3. Think of these as the common objectives for all players throughout the game. These ones always involve having a completed estates of certain sizes on your sheet. For example, this number one here means that the first player to have four estates that are each the size of two houses will complete this city plan and gain the eight points shown here. If more than one player completes the city plan on the same turn, any player who completed that will gain the eight points. As soon as a city plan has been achieved, you'll mark that number in the corresponding city plan box here on the left of your sheet. Then you will flip over the city plan card to the other side, showing that that maximum amount of eight points is no longer available. For the rest of the game, any players can continue collecting the smaller amount, which will be 4 points. Reminder that to be considered a completed estate, all of the houses' numbers must be filled in in that estate. Anytime a player achieves one of these city plans, they will mark it on their sheet by coloring in the completed estate at the back. This will serve as a reminder that that estate is part of a city plan and cannot be modified in any way for the rest of the game. So for example, if I achieve this one with these 4 size 2 estates, I cannot use one of those same ones on my sheet to meet the requirements for the number 2 estate on plan number 3. One final rule about achieving the city plans is the first player to complete any city plan can choose to reshuffle all 81 of the construction cards and make 3 new stacks if they want to. So once one of those previously mentioned 3 endgame conditions are met, the end of the game triggers and players will simply count up all the positive points in the blue section of their sheet and subtract all of the negative red points, which will create their final score. The player with the most points wins. If any players are tied, there are two different tiebreakers. The first tiebreaker will be the player with the most completed estates, regardless of the size of those estates, will win. If two players are still tied on the number of estates, then we'll start by looking at the size of the estates, going the player with the most size 1 estates, size 2 estates, etc., all the way up to size 6. If you're still tied after that, 
well, players will simply share the victory. As I mentioned before, the back of the rulebook has an advanced variant with more complex city plans. You can incorporate the roundabouts. There are also expert rules, as well as rules for a solo mode if you're interested in playing the game solo and trying to beat your high score. And that's how you play Welcome 2. Make sure you keep an eye out for our upcoming video review and written review. Check us out at allyoucanboard.com for any other content. Thanks again for watching.